Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, today is one I'm actually quite excited about. This is a pen I bought myself because I've wanted a pen from Edison for quite a while. And uh, I just didn't, none of the models really jumped out at me. So when uh, Goulet announced the Ascent pens, uh, I got one, I thought they were fabulous. And so I got the Nocturne finish, uh, which yeah, is very cool. So uh, let's have a quick uh, look at the pen. Let's look at some details and uh, see what it's all about. So this is how the pen comes packaged. Cardboard sleeve over a more sort of luxurious box with the Edison logo there, which I really, really love. That logo being a mix of the light bulb and the fountain pen nib. I think it's fabulous. Opens up and uh, you get a little bookmarky thing with some social media information, uh, which is nice logo again in the box there and then the pen this is the nocturne now there are three different finishes of this pen i chose the nocturne because i thought it was the color that uh, appealed to me the most and seeing as i was buying the pen i thought why not so you can see here this is like a mottled sort of gray brown to black hints of blue through it uh, finish it's really nice silver uh, clip screws to cap nice smooth threads well machined these are sort of handmade by machines uh, in Ohio in the US and they have um, German Yobo nibs branded with the Edison logo once again. I have the 1.1 millimeter stub here uh, and yes it's a really nice pen and as you can see it came nicely packaged and uh, Goulet have done a lovely job collaborating with Edison on these pens. So this was made after uh, the Premier model which has the pointed ends so it's a slightly smaller pen it's very light, uh, but uh, it's a nice pen, nice finish, and uh, I think a really nice addition to the line. And I think the way uh, Goulet have supported brands like Edison and Edison have supported brands like Goulet over the years uh, is to be really highly commended. Um, so, yes, screws the cap. International standard cartridge converter pen. Comes with a converter. Um, and... I would think that probably it could be eyedropper. I don't think there are any particularly metal parts in there, so something to think about as well if that's what you're into, which is great. Okay, so uh, let's talk a few specs of this pen. So uh, we see it here. I'll put it alongside a couple of pens. Firstly, here is the Lamy Safari, so you get a sense of the size. As I said, not a huge pen, but it is comfortable when it's posted. I'll show you that in a second. And then a pen I think it's sort of in a way comparable to, to a degree, is the Estabrook Esty. Now it's a much smaller pen than the Esty, but these are sort of that same machine turned acrylics uh, from a US company, although we think the Estabrook pens are made overseas, uh, and the, uh, the uh, Edison pens are made sort of in-house uh, in the US. I'll just take the Safari again and show them uncapped next to each other. So you get a sense of the size again. Oh, it's wanting to roll away. But you get the oh. But you get the idea. Small pen um, and a relatively sort of small section as well, but very comfortable. Posted. there's the size difference posted. So, not a big pen. The size of the pen, it is, well, posted, it's 139 millimeters. So it's not a big, big pen. Uh, unposted, it's 121. And it fits okay in the hand like that, but it's probably on the, you know, pushing it for the sort of size for, a, a, you know, a few people, particularly if you have particularly large hands. But posted, it's very comfortable, uh, and the weight of the pen is quite nice in that sort of posted format. It does back weight the little pen a little bit. A lot of the pen's weight is in the cap. The whole pen weighs 15 grams. Nine is in the cap, six is in the body. So it does tend to sort of put the balance off, but not so, because it is so light, it doesn't put it off too much. But the posting is very, very secure. The section is about nine millimeters, so it's on the smaller side, and it's a small section, but it does have a nice flare there at the end, and those threads are smooth and there's no massive step up, so you don't really feel like they're under your fingers at all, and that little uh, flare there does stop your fingers from running down onto the nib. Uh, let's talk price. This is 169 US dollars. So it isn't a cheap pen, 
uh, but you are getting something from a sort of smaller manufacturer, not a small manufacturer, but not, you know, like a big uh, pilot platinum sort of uh, manufacturer, um, as they're sort of overseen by a small company and uh, hand machined and all those sorts of things. So you are getting something that is more than just a mass produced pen here. And you are getting something that is nice and, you know, has an interesting, beautiful material as well. The uh, range of nibs runs from extra fine through to 1.1. So extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1. So they're German Yovo nibs branded with the Edison logo. It's a no fuss design. Basic sort of rounded top, separate piece of acrylic there, you know, to hold the clip in place. Rounded ends, nice smooth basic threads. It's not a fancy pen, but it is a really nice pen and it writes really beautifully, which you're gonna see uh, in just a second. The only branding on the pen is, if I can find it, is that engraving there. Edison Ascent, it's nice and small and understated on the barrel of the pen. That's quite vintage to do that and I like that. I like that it's not super branded, uh, but it is recognizable as an Edison pen. So let's do some writing and then we'll talk about the pros uh, and the cons of this pen. So here I have some Clairefontaine paper uh, and the ink I have in this is uh, Birmingham Pen Company Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. So this is the Nocturne finish. Uh, the three different versions are named after different styles of uh, like musical styles. So there's a Sonata as well, and I can't remember exactly what the other one is. I chose Nocturne because I like this color uh, scheme best myself. This is a 1.1 millimeter steel nib. And the ink, as I said, is Birmingham Pen Company. Oh, sorry, terrible writing. Andy Warhol. Pop Art Purple. So you can see this pen writes very, very nicely. The nibs are um, tuned before they are sent out on these pens. Uh, Edison do a really, really great job of that. This stub nib is nice. There's a good sort of variation between the uh, strokes there. And it lays down a nice, consistent, even patch of ink. If not the wettest pen, it is certainly wet enough. Oh, I've got other ink mixed in there from my fingers, um, but you get the idea. So these stub nibs, like as a left-handed writer, I don't get the same effect from stub nibs as a right-handed writer will. If I just do a bit of bad right-handed writing, um, the shape is much more pronounced. Um, if I just write eh. Edison. Oh, that was terrible. But you see that the 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 line shape is much more pronounced when uh, it's done on that angle that a right-handed writer is able to get. I like writing with stub nibs because when I write uh, on this sort of more uh, horizontal axis of the nib, I get that sort of you know shape, which I quite like. So there are pros and cons with a pen like this. I think that the, the pros outweigh the cons, uh, but there are both pros and cons. Two of the cons I'm going to say are personal. Uh, one is the fact that it is a very light pen. Um, it's it's not insubstantial, but it is very, very light in your hand, you know, and not being a big pen, uh, it, it has a tendency to feel a little insubstantial. But in saying that, the writing experience, the feel in the hand is lovely. Like that, that balance in your hand, the way it fits in your hand, it's quite nice. The other thing I'm going to say is at this price point, 169 US, which translates into much more in Australian. There are gold nib pens you can get at this price point. Alami 2000 is actually a little bit cheaper. So something to think about, uh, you are paying for a steel nib pen, but what you're getting is a nice pen. And if you want, you could get a gold nib, pen, nib to go on there, but that would add an exorbitant amount more to the price. 
The other con, and this is something that's a little bit more sort of a uh, perhaps universal, is the fact that it's a very thin acrylic. Uh, there's not a lot to it. And my biggest concern is that there is no cap band here. So if that chips, if that cracks, then uh, you are going to find that this that this pen, you know, will struggle to cap, uh, and you are running a risk of chipping quite badly that uh, that cap there because there's no sort of support for those threads. If you overturn it, you are likely to crack through that. So it's something to be aware of. But in terms of the pros, the size of this pen posted is great. That's a really, really comfortable, easy writing size. You can write with this pen for hours. And I'll tell you what, the pen keeps up. I have written with this pen for hours. No hard starts, no ink starvation, nothing like that. It just writes and writes and writes beautifully. I do love the threads. They are just nicely machined. You know, it, it screwed a cap, but it's one and a bit turns. That's it. So quick, smooth, nice to use. The other thing I really love about this pen is the finish. So both this material, but also how the material is finished, that polish, that like I said, this is a separate piece of uh, acrylic there for the end cap, but like, the, the seam there is almost flawless. Like there's a couple of points where you can feel it, but it's almost flawless. Um, it's just a, a beautiful, smooth, polished, nicely handled material. Uh, and it feels lovely in the hand because of that. So in turn, so do I like this pen? I really, really like this pen. I think this is a beautiful pen. I think uh, Edison have done a great job and congratulations to Goulet for going along with this collaboration and um, having this as their pen. So go to Goulet, I'll link down below to this pen. Uh, go to the Goulet website and check it out. Uh, check out the other finishes um, if they're what you're into. But uh, I think this is a really nice pen and something that I'm really glad to have in my collection. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, brands or you know new products that are out on the market, let me know. Or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.